Welcome. Welcome. It's Friday, and we are in this uh, first week of the Advent season. Mm -hmm. And the great Isaiah uh, prophet, as you take opportunity to read today, is Isaiah 29, verses 17 to 24, and gives us a beautiful Advent lesson. Isaiah was an outstanding poet, and in spite of the limitations of the privilege of ancient Hebrew language, Isaiah was a dramatically expressive poet um, whose talents conveyed well God's message. And so take an opportunity to read um, Isaiah chapter 29, verses 17 to 24. You'll be quite surprised um, at um, the poetic structure that's being used by the prophet Isaiah. But as we begin, let us begin in prayer in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Jesus, our Lord, save us from our sins. Come, protect us from all danger and lead us to salvation. For you live and you reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today we're looking at the Gospel of Matthew. It's chapter 9, verses 27 to 31. Now, the gospel tells us how the ancient dream of Isaiah was fulfilled in Jesus. Here, two blind men pursue the Lord and are treated with exquisite divine compassion. So, let us listen, especially um, as we have moved out of this year of mercy we can realize from Scripture how the mercy of God is forever and constant. As Jesus passed by, two blind men followed him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes, and said, Let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread word of him throughout all the land. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to, you, to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So, wow. as, as Jesus was you moved on from Capernaum, those two blind men... Um, who have come out to meet him, uh, they call out. They say, Son of David, have pity on us. And when he got the, uh, to the house, the blind man caught up with him, and Jesus said to him, Are you confident I can do this? Um, the man had great faith because he says yes. And he knows that Jesus can do this. And I think also he's able to know that reality just because of the fact that he has heard from other people on his own personal journey that Jesus has brought healing to people's lives. And so he's looking to Jesus to bring this healing touch upon him. Um, and it's really because of this man's faith that Jesus reaches out to him and touches him. And they um, recover their sight. And what we need to realize is um, that... Um, Faith is so important. Um, if we don't have faith, then how in the world do you expect prayer to um, complete its task? Mm -hmm. Because of the fact that um, prayer um, gets joined to faith of the individual, even though the individual is not maybe not necessarily praying for themselves, and you're praying for them, their faith. Um, attaches to the prayer and it makes the prayer even stronger because the individual who is praying has faith and the individual who is um, receiving the grace from prayer is also a faith-filled person. And so it is um, by faith that one receives healing and it is by faith that one um, comes to know 
um, the healing power of God. Uh, there's somewhere within the context of the scripture that um, Jesus has said to a woman, um, uh, uh, I don't usually um, feed the dogs. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that um, that comes across very strong in scripture. But Jesus also notes um, her strong personal faith. And in that faith is maybe blended that great hope in looking to Jesus and asking Jesus for healing. Um, so even for her part, it's not just a moment to receive something free, but it's a moment by saying um, that I trust in you, I have confidence in you, I know that you can do this, and that's why I turn to you asking for healing. And Jesus then does answer her prayer. Mm -hmm. But just to say, well, give me some of that um, isn't the proper attitude when it comes to being prayed with. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They say that faith is a free gift and it is a gift that is given to us. For those who feel they don't have faith or they don't have enough faith, what would you want to say to them? Is it a matter of just asking? Can we say, Lord, I, I would like to have faith or... I need to increase my faith or, you know, if, if it is a gift that is given to us, then how can one receive it? And what would be the, the disposition to be able to receive that? No, I think that it has to be on the part of an individual saying um, that I desire faith, O oh Lord, and I'm open to receiving this gift. And um, the individual, in a sense, pleads for that gift and God in his love and mercy gives that gift. Mm -hmm. But if the desire for that gift is not there, God doesn't see it within the individual, then the gift is not going to happen. Or the gift is not given, right? Yeah. It's you kind of like to... somebody coming to you and saying, oh, um, would I, could I get into your confirmation class mm -hmm. because um, I want to be confirmed because I've been asked to be a godparent mm -hmm. at baptism. Well, that's really the wrong, wrong reason. reason. Yeah, it's the wrong reason. And so, you know, you wonder, is, is the depth of faith um, really not there? Because my desire for confirmation has nothing to do with my faith. It has everything to do with someone has asked me to be a godparent, and so mm -hmm. therefore I'm selecting to be right. confirmed mm -hmm. um, in order to be able to do this. And mm -hmm. there are so many people out there who seek the sacraments because of that disposition. Right, and not because they're truly seeking that which is the, the, the um, what do they say, the pearl of great price. Exactly. Right, they just are wanting to do something because it's expedient for them or it, it meets a need and not because they're really valuing the gift that they're going to be given. Um, because that is a good that is a good thought. Because I've had people say, "Well, you know, I don't know if I have enough faith. I don't know what that means, and I don't know if faith is something that you can describe to say. Well, this is what faith is. Well, this is what it looks like. Only this is what it is lived. This is how faith is lived. It is by entering into a relationship with a person that happens to be the Son of God." Mm -hmm. And it's that relationship that that is that and maybe that what faith is, is that relationship that comes between the two of you. Um, is that if you had to say it describe that, what would you say that would be? I, I think that um, it, it has to do with desire. Desire. I have a desire, desire to, to know God, to know God. And mm -hmm. if the desire mm -hmm. is there, God will fulfill that desire because it's actual faith. Yeah. Bye bye. Goodbye. <laughs>